1955, you arranged for Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis to appear on the Colgate Comedy Hour. How did that come about? Well, I'm a salesman, and I represented Martin and Lewis, and with them as my bait, I signed the 30-week comedy hour. I was the agent for the 30 weeks, but I knew I didn't have enough comedy comedians, so I gave 10 weeks to William Morris. Dave's filled with their comedian, and I promised to do four Martin and Lewis shows. The only problem was that in the midst of the contract, uh, Mr. Barton and Mr. Lewis decided to break up. And uh, How did that affect your deal? Well, a man by the name of Mr. Little, the president of Colgate, called Mr. Wasserman and said, uh, I con signed a contract with Mr. Adams, and part of the contract he guaranteed four Martin and Lewis shows. He has only delivered three. Goodbye, Mr. Wasserman. And so Mr. Wasserman called me in and said, repeated the conversation. He said, now would you mind go out and do the fourth show? Kick me out of his office. So I just said, well, how am I going to do this? Well, my close relationship was with Dean Martin. So I went to see Dino. And Dino is from the streets of Steubenville. I'm from the streets of Chicago, about the same age. And I said, you know, Dino, all of this stuff with you, and I don't know what would happen with you and Jerry, and nor am I interested. You have a contract that you signed, and you have to complete the contract. You gave your word. That's more important than a signed document. Anyway, he said, you're absolutely right. But... I want you to produce the show. I want this, the producers fired. I want the director fired. I want everybody fired. The writers all fired. You put the staff together and you run the show. So I went to see, from there I went to see Mr. Lewis at his home in Amalfi Drive. Talked to him, same as I had to Dino. And he said, you're telling me you want to get rid of Glucksman? I said, yeah. He hasn't any creativity at all. He's only your babysitter now. Ernie Glucksman. Ernie Glucksman. And how about the writers? I went down. I don't one of the writers. They're my clients. I told them they were all bums. They all forgot their ability. I made their sacrifice to be of worship to Danny. I mean, to Jerry Lewis. And that was no good for the show. And, and that everybody has to be fired. Next day, I'm walking down Vine Street, and I bump into Ernie Glucksman. He says, I hear you don't want me on the Dean Martin show. I said, yeah, that's right. How do you know that? He says, well, Jerry Lewis called us over to his house Sunday and played your tape. He had recorded everything that I had said and played it for his staff. I went back and called every writer, told them they're fired, why they're fired. And Jerry gave up and said, OK. We'll do it your way. One of the other things that Jerry couldn't go up in the booth, he always wanted to be in the director's booth when Dino was out there rehearsing with Danny Arnold or Joey Foster, whoever was around. He, he never had Jerry standing with him when he was rehearsing the show. So wasn't there a resentment from? No, they did the show. It was a brilliant, great show. We had a good producer, uh, Russ Fink, I mean, Bob Finkel. And Everybody was fine. Everybody was happy. 